Look at her eyes. And she has a uh, she has a little crystal here. And oh man, the little dark patches from the soot and the oh man, I love this freaking artwork. Man. I'm a big fan of this artist already. I am a big fan of this artist already. Look at how good she looks. Yo, what's up guys? I'm Grandmaster Shaman and welcome back to the channel. And today we have a brand new series underway with this game that just came out, guys. Just came out what, like two, three days ago? I'm really, really excited. I was going to put Monica before story, uh, before this one, but now I'm just gonna have them air at the same time because I really wanna play this game and it just came out. It's only about $8 on Steam. It's called Escape from the Princess, but let me, let me tell you something about this. It is one of the most amazing premises. You know why? Because it's a Yuri visual novel and you if you guys have known anything about my channel about me personally the purest form of love is between two girls and so we're going to play this game in English because I don't even know what that means so and look at look at how amazing oh sorry look at how amazing the artwork is, like, look at this. Look at this gorgeous, like, I wish my hair glowed in the sun like that. I'm beyond ready. Man, the artwork in this game, uh, again, for like eight, like, look at it, look at how vibrant these colors are. The magic staff, the quartz, the, the, the glimmering from the sun. And, and they even have the little white speckles moving. If you notice, they're, they're actually moving. And I love the little ribbons. I, they look like they've been up there for a while, but the colors are still pretty bright, vibrant nonetheless. I wake up bright and early today. Feeling kind of down, I lay in bed for a few moments while staring blankly at the ceiling. Not that there's anything to stare at. I'm just trying to distract myself from what happened yesterday. Once again, I tried to pass the entrance exam to the Academy of Magic to become an elemental mage, but I failed miserably, as always. Though, unlike before, I didn't just fail this time. I was almost thrown out the door. Oh, shit. What kind of people treat an innocent girl like that? What if I accidentally summoned a tentacled monster in, in that barrel instead of a flower? <laughs> Sorry, so what if I <laughs> summoned a tentacle monster instead of a flower in the barrel? I mean, they're close! They're close! You know, honest mistake. It's not like it was the end of the world, was it? The committee, which mostly consists of older witches, was quite unhappy with my results. Remembering their outraged screams, I wince. Although, to be fair, when one of the monster's tentacles slipped under my skirt, I squealed just as loudly as those old ladies. Whoa. Let's calm down there, buddy. But still, there's no reason to so cruelly kick me out. I unconsciously scratched my bottom, which is still bruised from yesterday. Which is not surprising considering I was so rudely pushed out the door and tossed out on my bum. Ah, what a pain that was. I thought my tailbone had broken. Damn, they kicked you out. They literally kicked you out. That hard? Jesus. Sighing heavily, I reached into the pile of clothes laying on the floor next to my bed. Begrudgingly, I slowly dress myself as I look around the room. I mean, I feel like you... I, I mean, I guess it... So, to some people, it kind of sucks to, you know, get dressed, but begrudgingly? My room is a mess, not that I care. Man, I love, I love her hair. That reddish pink color. And the little emeralds, and her outfit is adorable. Is there? No, that, that'll take me to that page. Interesting. Okay, so I can't really pull this down, but I, I like her knee socks as well, and yeah, definitely looks good. If I can't become an elemental mage, what's the point of doing anything at all, let alone clean my room? I mean, holy gods. My, my life is over. I love her eyes, too. Speaking of, speaking of stuff I love, I mean, th this is, the entire scene is just beautiful. 
crafted, in my opinion. It's not... It, it's, it's just really well done. My life is over. Who in this state of mind would be thinking about dusting, dusting and t tidying up? Man, now she's looking at me. She's just... Wow. Whew. I glance all over the magical artifacts, reagents, and books I've spent on money. My, all my money on. Sorry, guys. It seems we're not meant to be. Approaching my shelves, I begin to sort through the different trinkets I'd collected over the years. Goodbye, magic staff, even though you've never been more than a useless stick in my hands. Farewell, rain summoning crystal, which brought... I bought on sale for 99.9 .9 copper coins. How do you get a 0.9 of a copper coin? Farewell, lucky rabbit's foot, although you haven't helped me with anything at all. Suddenly, my stomach begins to growl treacherously, interrupting the tragic moment. I immediately return to the Encyclopedia of Magical Creatures, which I, I had been meaning to say goodbye to as well, back to its place on the shelf. Tragedy is, of course, good, but breakfast is even better. I think I should have... Uh, I should have time later to say farewell to the rest of my magical items I doubt I'll ever use. I briskly walk towards the stairs which lead down to the kitchen. I wonder if there's any food left. Once in the kitchen, I immediately begin searching the cupboard, the cupboard for something to eat. There's nothing edible left. Well, it figures. You need to buy groceries. You need to buy groceries to, in order to eat food. But how would you buy them if you spent all your money on the now useless magical trinkets that I needed for my studies? I, you have absolutely zero talent for magic. Just deal with it. Forget about the academy and occupy, occupy with some, yourself with something simpler. Something that even you can do. But what if I don't want to just deal with it and move on? Shouldn't you always follow your dreams? If it's so easy to give up on something that you've wished for with all your heart, then what's the point of continuing on? Frustrated, I kick a bucket of dirty dishes, then look around again. If you need to think like a criminal to catch one, then to find food, I need to think like food? Hmm, what does food even think about? Surely it would have to hide away in a dark corridor to avoid being eaten. Although that's the kind of selfish of it. Food's purpose is to fill one's belly. Like mine, for example. I wonder if the nook under the table is a good hiding place for it. I guess I'll take a look. Without hesitation, I dive under the table and start fumbling around in search for something, anything edible. Luckily, my perseverance is rewarded. I feel something round and smooth, and pulling it out from the table, I see it's an apple. Or something re resembling one, at least. It's a bit soft, and oddly enough, covered in suspicious gray spots. But more importantly, it's... Oh no! <laughs> Don't eat it! Don't eat it! I quickly wipe it against my clothes, sit down at the table, and gnaw away. <laughs> it tastes no better than it looks, so I try to imagine that I'm eating a tasty cake with pink frosting instead. Pink frosting with gray sprinkles. Ew. While I'm chewing and wondering how the suspicious apple will affect my stomach later on, I hear a commotion coming from the street, and I listen. To the screams of the bystanders, the sound approaching hooves. Hmm, it seems like something's happening again in our troublesome district. Stuffing the remains of my apple into my mouth, I leaned out the window. Yo, put on some cl- what is this chick wearing? That, like... Everyone and the entire kingdom can see your tits. That, that is a jacket over nothing. Now... My other issue is that I feel like this should be totally fine. Because, I don't know, I know, I, I know this is kind of a terrible time to get into, like, freaking what is right and what is wrong. But I feel like if, uh, I, there's, why, why is there something wrong with a woman's boobs, if, but a man can totally have their chest out no problem? Just because, what, theirs it doesn't have as much fat on it? But what if theirs does? Because fat men can have their freaking tits out all the time. Or even if it's muscle. Like, what's the difference between someone like Biggie Langston from WWE who has, like, basically size F cup boobs, but they're, they're pecs? Like, I, I, I just, I don't see the difference in my opinion. In my, in my opinion... 
girls should be allowed to do that too. It's up to them, but whatever. Wow, are those guardsmen? <sighs> Have those lazy bums finally decided to do their jobs? I watched as a mounted soldier chase a girl in a raincoat. That's a raincoat? How is that a raincoat? She's wearing a cape. A hooded cape. I, I guess that. I mean, I guess you could consider that a raincoat, but she's not really wearing it. I would. I would beg to differ on the fact that she's wearing it. The very least. But I feel like I, I don't want this chick to get arrested because she's w not wearing any clothes. That's my other thing. Like, if for whatever reason they want to make it a law to have girls not be able to show their tits, then, you know, they're going to enforce it. And I don't want her to be arrested. <sighs> she must be from the Eastern Kingdom. We don't get Easterners in these lands. The girl obviously has no clue clue of the shopping district's layout. Frantically looking around, she slips into the first alleyway. Idiot, that's a dead end. We should have gone down the other street. Is she a thief? Or maybe a murderer? I wonder why our brave defenders of the law and order are after her. I lean out the window a little more, trying to catch what the guards are saying, but I can't understand much. I can only hear snatches of what they're saying. Capture her! She went that way! I'm tempted to go down the first, uh, for a front row view of the action, but then the girl runs back out of the alley down the road and almost under the hooves of the ostentuous ostentatiously decorated guarded horses. God fucking okay. I mean okay, whatever. <laughs> I just can't pronounce anything. If you've been on my channel long enough, I, I just can't pronounce anything. I told you it was a dead end. This is it. If she isn't crushed by the horses, the guardsmen will definitely get her. Barely avoiding getting transferred, the girl suddenly stops. What are you doing? Run! I know perfectly well that she can't hear my cry from way up here. I like how the main character's like, she could be a murderer, she could be a thief. Let's root for her to kick that cops' ass! <laughs> I mean, she is incredibly beautiful, though. Like, I love her freaking, uh, the red eye makeup, and the, her giant earrings are super cute, and her purple hair. It's a, I, I love the, the design of it a lot. And her clothes look amazing. Like, the, the red and the green, um, sleeves look really, really solid. I mean, even though she doesn't really cover anything up here, which, again, like I was saying earlier, not that big of a deal, but, um, you know, even though she isn't covering anything up here, I mean, I, I like the jacket, and, and even down here, like, this is really cute, the little, uh, gold jewels down here, and, and on her, on her belt buckle thing, it's really cute, and when, I, and just when I think it's all over, the fugitive pulls out a small pouch and folds over her clothing, oh, I like the color. And then throws a handful of powder in the air. It flashes and turns into purple smoke before completely obscuring the girl from sight. That's amazing. It's not every day you see action like this in the middle of the market square. When the smoke finally clears, it's apparent that the fugitive had gone with it. Realizing that their play had escaped, the soldiers begin to anxiously search the area. Search every nook and cranny. Find her. Look at her eyes! I love it! Look at her eyes! Oh man, the little hearts? She's like, whoa, that wasn't just any ordinary girl. Things are getting interesting. There are only a few magic users in town, even though that, that even few enough that they can be counted on one hand. Well, no, perhaps it's perhaps both hands and feet? Still, not that many. But I don't recall any of them looking like that witch. I, a feeling of envy that begins to draw over me. Not, not that I want to be in her place, but the way she could so adeptly use her magic to escape the soldiers, it, so, it only serves to remind me of my own magical inadequacies. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having a little of her magic. I hope the soldiers don't get her. There are a few mages left in this world, and they need to be protected. And those bloody... 
Marionette. Mar Mar no, that's not marionettes. Marionettes. Words. Insists on cutting off their heads over nonsense, fly frying witches at the stake. Frying. And now I'm thinking about a barbecue, which sets my appetite even more. Hungrily, I continue watching around the window in an attempt to distract my growling stomach. The captain of the guard gives the soldiers orders, and they begin to immediately fuss about. The mounted soldier takes off in different directions, most likely searching for the witch to down neighboring streets. While the foot patrols begin searching my, the nearby houses, how naive, the prob fugitive is probably halfway to Eastern Kingdom by now. Deciding on that, e deciding that the excitement is now over, I pull back from the window. I have nowhere to go. I will not be, I'm not welcome at the academy anymore. I lost my job and I still haven't looked for a new one yet. Hoping to find something to do, I start looking around again. This day will never end if I don't find a way to kill some time. Perhaps I should go clean some of this mess. At least wash the dishes? What am I thinking? I'm really going mad with despair, aren't I? But before I can decide what to do, I hear a su suspicious rustling coming from the fireplace. I listen closely, but I don't hear it again. Hmm, am I hearing things? Well, I knew my poor nutrition would lead to trouble. I bet these gray spots on the apple are to blame. Turning away from the fireplace, I sit down at the table and begin, uh, begin expecting a stain on the tablecloth, which is shaped almost like the map of our kingdom. Well, it sort of looks like a shape anyway. I'm about to outline the stain with a pencil when I hear rustling from the fireplace again. The sound is now louder and more pronounced, and it seems to be coming from the chimney. There's something there. I glance out the window and make sure it is indeed still summer, but I can't that I shouldn't be expecting any guests down the chimney. <laughs> Maybe it's Santa! There's something there. I got oh. Black soot starts to rain down from the fireplace as something wiggles inside the chimney above. Interesting. What the hell is this? I, I hardly call my home clean, but this is too much. Did a bird get stuck up there and is now trying to get out? That's just what I need. Although, on the other hand, it might be a nice, fat, clumsy pigeon. I might be eating lunch today. Mmm, I love fat pigeons. Look at our freaking twinkling eyes in their mouth. <laughs> Yo, she's so cute. <sighs> Encouraged by the thought, I excitedly look up into the chimney. But it's too dark, I can barely see anything. What's worse, soot keeps falling down in my face and into my eyes. Then I suddenly hear a yelp from above. Ah, I'm falling! I better move. I don't get very far when something falls down the fireplace and lands in the cloud of black soot. Yo! Look at her eyes! And she has a, uh, she has a little crystal here. And, oh man, the little dark patches from the soot and the... Oh man, I love this freaking artwork. Man. I'm a big fan of this artist already. I am a big fan of this artist already. Look at how good she looks. That's not easy to pull off. Oops. I fell down. Hmm, that something bears a suspicious resemblance to the witch that the guards were chasing. Upon closer expression, yeah, it's definitely her. Rather a dirtier version of her. Seeing me, the witch immediately puts a finger to her lips. Though she doesn't need to ask, I'm so dumbfounded by her sudden appearance that my brain is completely shut down. All I can manage right now is staring blankly at her, blinking in shock. Realizing that I have no intention of alerting the guards, the girl sighs in relief, then looks around at the, and wrinkles her nose. Ew, what a mess you have here. Upon hearing her comment, I immediately s sh shoot back in righteous dis in indignation. You know, I'm having a rough... I, I, like, I know what these words mean, and I know what they are. It's just me stumbling over them is crazy. Okay. Not only does the cheeky stranger burst into my home uninvited, but she has the nerve to insult my humble abode. Of course, it's true that it's a mess, but she could extend me a little courtesy considering how har harboring I'm harboring a fugitive. Hey, what are you doing? I didn't invite you in. The witch stands up and begins to nonchalantly br brush herself off, raising a cloud of soot around her. It almost looks like this is how she usually pays visits. But I don't have the time to wait for her to, to answer when someone knocks at the door. The witch immediately freezes and stares at the door as if she were trying to see behind, who is behind it. 
There's another impatient knock at the door. The hefty sound is surely being made by an iron glove of one of the guards' large fists. My guest folds her hand, hands in a pleading gesture, beg begging me to not turn her in. Despite the fact that she dared comment on my messy house, I can't bring myself to hand the witch over to the guards. Open the door now! It's uh, the town watch! Needing to stall for time as my uninvited guest hides herself, I blurt out the first thing that comes to mind. You have the wrong address. There aren't any guards here. This is private property. Open up! Why are you so persistent? Look, look for the town... Look for your town watch elsewhere. I'm telling you, this is a private house, not the barracks. I hear loud cursing from behind the door. Ouch, how rude of them to call the girls such nasty things. If you don't open this door right now, we'll bust it in. Shoot, this is just great. Turning to the witch, I noted that she's already crawled beneath a table co covered with a long tablecloth. There's so much better hiding places, but it'll do. I hope there's enough room with all the books and rejected letters I've shoved under there. Hearing the guards counting down, I quickly interject before they kick down the door. Hold on, hold on, I got it. I'm coming up. I'm opening up now. No need to bust down the door. I still have some use for it. I can... <laughs> She's so funny. I... The counting immediately stops and I unlatch the bolt, but before I have time to open the door, it's flung wide open and a whole group of soldiers burst into the room. Look at these mother frickers, dude. Look at this guy. His armor has abs. Why does his armor have abs? That's not how... What the fuck? <laughs> anyway... The captain of the guards, stepping forward, stops and looks around. Wincing in disgust, he turns to one of his soldiers. Really, what a mess! The soldier nods in agreement, clearly, clearly hoping to curry his superior's favor. Hush, hush! Do you have business with me, or have you only come to insult my skills as a hostess? What gives you the right to burst into my home like this? Feeling the pressure, the captain noticeably backs off, serves him right, it's rude to make such comments about people's homes right in front of their faces. Yeah, douche. Um, my apologies. A very dangerous criminal escaped our custody today, and we're now searching for her in the building surrounding... Surrounding... The... The R. The area. Criminal, how terrible. The captain, seeing my concern, continues. Furthermore, this girl is a witch, and her crimes involve the use of magic. A witch? Oh my, magic is horrifying. Surely she must have done something terrible. The captain's face turns on an inscrutable inscr expression. He might have been ordered to not divulge the details of the fugitive's crimes. Leaving my question without answer, he orders the guards to search the house. Enthusiastically, they begin to brazenly look through the cabinets and closets, emptying books of junk out onto the floor. Let's go. Let it go. It's not going to... It's not like it can get much worse. But now I'm really curious about my uninvited guest. Perhaps I can convince the captain to tell me more? Although he wasn't so eager to say much about her until just a moment ago. Well, I just have to loosen his lips a little. Seeing the guards now snooping around the table, I anxiously look for a way to drive them away. Like taking risks. I like taking risks, but not going to prison for assisting a wanted criminal. That's not exactly what I'm willing to take. Hmm, I wonder if they'll search elsewhere if their captain and I were sitting at the table. I immediately turn to the captain and bat my innocent eyelashes at him. Captain, are you not tired? I often see you patrolling on your horse. It's very clear that you're a busy man. You have so many important duties, including uh, capturing dangerous com criminals. I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have little time to relax. I cannot relax. I am on duty. Oh, I knew you'd say that. You're such a hard worker, and you do it all for our safety. It's so nightly. Hmm. You know, it would be an honor to sit at the same table as a man of your stature. Unfortunately, I have nothing more to offer you. Uh, I have nothing to offer you save for a moment of rest. I hope you wouldn't refuse a poor girl's generosity. With disgust, the captain looks at the dirty chair sitting next to the table. What a sissy. You can't even... <laughs> you can't even... He hasn't even seen my cockroaches yet, although I tend to stumble across them in the morning. Realizing he's about to refuse, I decide to employ my most powerful technique. I give myself the cutest look I can muster while batting my eyelashes. Pretty please. <laughs> look at her freaking face. Uh, 
uh, without saying a word, and to my surprise, he pulls out a handkerchief and places it on the chair. <laughs> You're wearing goddamn armor! Look, you won't get like your armor's not gonna get fucking dirty sitting on a goddamn chair, dude. What the fuck is this guy's problem? Without saying a word, and to my surprise, the captain pulls out a handkerchief and places it on the chair. The lacy handkerchief is far too fancy for a man of his gruff nature. But only... Then does he sit down. I immediately express my utter delight. This is such a great honor for someone as lowly as myself. Uh, my guests should be relatively safe for now. I doubt the so soldiers would crawl underneath with both of us sitting there. And then it dawns on me that this is the perfect opportunity to learn something about the escapee. I don't know a thing about this girl after all. Perhaps I really am in danger. But please, I beg of you to tell me what twisted crime this witch has committed. I feel the escapee pinch my leg beneath the table. Lightly kicking her back, I stare questioningly at the captain. He looks to his soldiers, who are currently preoccupied with throwing his my stuff around, and then turns to me again. You do realize that this is conf confidential information, don't you? But of course. I swear I'll say nothing of it to anyone. I beg of you to tell me, otherwise I won't be able to sleep at night. Although... I bashfully lower my eyes. I probably won't sleep tonight anyway, since I'll be thinking of you. Oh, man. Is he gonna, how's he gonna respond to that? I've always been intrigued by ruthless and incorruptible men such as yourself. The captain feigns a cough and I notice his face flush through the slits of his helm. What a wuss. Could, how could he so easily fall for such a bla such blatant flattery? <laughs> Yo, she's fucking good at this, damn. Please. Deciding that a beautiful girl like myself is worth trusting, the captain leans in close. Keep in mind that this information is for internal use only. It's not like I'll use this information in the exterior, so... It is it is said that this witch uses her magic for wicked purposes. I was already aware of that. Those close to the royal family say that the witch used her abdominal magic to bewitch Princess Elise. Hmm. What could she possibly have done that, uh, done to her? Sorry. What could she have possibly done to her? Whoa. Shit. Okay. I accidentally clicked back. If I recall, our princess is much more experienced in the use of magic than most other witches. I heard that the witch spent the night in the princess's room, and in the morning, her majesty was found half-naked. So they had sex. How is that bewitching? The princess totally wanted that shit, and she's just into BDSM. What is your problem, dude? I mean... Shouldn't... Um, damn, okay. With a gag in her mouth. It's possible that the cursed witch cast an enchantment on the princess and stole her maiden's honor. No, so this witch is a pervert. I immediately grimace in pain as the witch bites at my ankle with all of her might. Kicking her hard this time, I pretend my distress is merely a reaction to the captain's words. Oh, how fine of you are to warn me about her, captain. I am but a lonely girl living all by myself. It's terrifying to think what could happen to me if a perverted witch snuck into my home through the chimney, for example. I hear her angry panting coming from beneath the table and begin to wail loudly in an attempt to drown it out. Without thinking, I gesture, gesture towards the fireplace and the captain looks over and immediately notices a trail of soot leading beneath the table. Damn. Attempting to distract him, I lower my sleeve, the sleeve of my dress to expose my shoulder, and the captain ignores it and shoots up from his chair. That good-for-nothing jerk. Then walks towards the fireplace and peeks inside. Where did these tracks come from, ma'am? Tracks? What tracks? Don't make a fool of me. These black marks on the floor. Oh, you're talking about those tracks. I decided to clean up a little today and started with the fireplace. I brushed it, brushed it, brushed it, and then heard a knock at the door, and it turned out to be you. I might say you distracted me right in the middle of my work. So, you were tidying up. Skeptically, the gra captain glances at the mountains of dirty dishes and other debris in the clutter of the room. Well, I always start my cleaning with the fireplace. If you start with something else, then switch to the fireplace, the soot often falls down, and then everything is dirty again. 
My, my. What about those tracks? Tracks? Well, those are mine, of course. They, see, they still follow me from the fireplace to the table where I'm now sitting. I try coming up with more nonsense, but the stolers would report to the captain that there isn't anything suspicious in the house. You see, there's nothing and no one here. Do you really believe I'd let some perverted witch who harmed our innocent princess into my house? I finally managed to get rid of the guards and their captain, although he made me a pro promise to report anything unusual I might see. <laughs> Maybe witches falling out of fireplaces is a usual thing for me, and I deal with it every day. As soon as I shut the door, I promptly bolt in tight. The witch, realizing that she's now safe, calls out from beneath the table. Well, that's about all the ha time I have for this episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. This seems like it's going to be pretty hilarious. So, and probably sexy. Which, I don't know, I mean... I, I, you know, we'll see. So, make sure you click that thumbs up button down below for me if you haven't already. Leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on uh, this visual novel. And uh, we'll see you all next time.